Hmm. The cabin was sealed. I'm pretty sure the seal doesn't have any legal relevance here on the open sea, but I'm still dependent on Legrand letting me join his team. I better not blow it by breaking his seal without permission. antique wooden globe. If Galileo hadn't asserted himself back then, this would be a flat disk now. Wonderful. Sunshine and a blue sky above the Mediterranean Sea. It would be a perfect cruise day, if not for the murder. The ship must have been rebuilt at some point. I'm sure it didn't originally have such a modern glass roof. Did Edison have any idea what would become of his invention? Big, soft towels. I could reserve a deck chair with it. No, better not. These things made quite a racket last night. I couldn't hear myself think. I'd really like to lie in the sun and take a nap, but I don't have time for that at the moment. Curious. One can easily toss a gun into the sea from almost anywhere on the ship without being noticed. And yet, the murderer chose the one spot where it's not actually possible. I suppose the life jackets are stowed there, close to the railing, close at hand in case of emergency. We were here yesterday when we heard the shot, and it was also here where Legrand caught our stowaway. Hmm. The grate must be part of the ship's ventilation system. Nothing out of the ordinary. This isn't a panoramic deck for visitors. There are pipes, steel cables, chains up here. 
You can smell the smoke from the funnel. I have no idea how the ship works, and I really don't care, as long as it stays afloat. Hmm. A boat like this would also make a good hideout for a stowaway. Is there an axe hanging here? Hmm. I suppose it's for chopping through ropes in the event that the lifeboats can't be lowered. Or they use it to enforce who's allowed on the boat and who's not. The ship's bridge. Two men. One of them navigating. I get the impression that the officers keep things running. It seems like the captain concentrates on the passengers and the bar. There's dirt piled up in the corner. Down below where the passengers are, the ship is pretty clean. But the crew doesn't seem to care as much up here. Stowaway surely didn't sleep well last night in the cargo hold, although his cell is probably more comfortable than my cabin, and more spacious. It may not seem like it, but Constable Oliver is actually a very effective watchman. <coughs> Uh, uh, what's going on? The raven just flew by. What? Or at least, he might as well have. Uh, I wasn't asleep. I understand. It was just a ruse. Any conclusions about a young stowaway? Uh, he's a bit suspicious. Foreign and whatnot. I see. Did he act suspiciously in any way? No. The shot surprised him as much as it did me. Looked in on him earlier. Still seems to be asleep. Covered with a blanket from head to toe? Oh, he's still in there. I poked him. May I go downstairs and have a couple of words with our guest? No, you may not. Come again? Inspector Legrand wants to conduct all the interrogations himself. I'm sure he'll understand if I form my own conclusions. He ordered me to guard the door, and that's just what I'm gonna do. How about a bit of individual initiative? How about letting a man do his job? Or do you think you'd be better at it? What do you think? What happened here last night? The Raven broke into the Baroness's cabin, she surprised him, and he shot her. What was he looking for in her cabin? She was a rich woman. Why did he lock the door? <laughs> Why not? From inside? An impressive trick. I'm not saying I know how he did it, I'm just saying that it was him. Why didn't he leave a Raven feather? Are you serious? We'd have suspected him straight away. But fortunately, we still did. Let's assume that the old Raven really has returned and that he really is responsible for all this. Who is he? Or she? Oh, could be anyone. No one's ever seen the Raven. He could also be paying someone else to do his dirty work. Well, of course. Uh, it's a fact that he used to work with partners. They even arrested some of his accomplices. But no one could ever identify the Raven himself. Some claims that they didn't even know that they were working for him. Fascinating. He could have hired someone with financial difficulties to set off the alarm at a certain time without that person knowing why they were doing it. The man Legrand shot back then. He was a famous safecracker. He could just as well have been a henchman. Or the real Raven. There's probably no better cover for a big thief than acting like a small one. I don't want to keep you from your duties any longer. Good idea. Constable Oliver brought something to drink. You can tell it's not the first time he's had to guard something.
I wonder if this game is an advanced version of Bocce. Maybe the inventor realized that it's difficult to play ball games on a boat and came up with an alternative. Salty sea air in my old lungs, wind in my thinning hair. If I hadn't become a policeman, I could have been a sailor. An evacuation plan? And some tips from the doctor for avoiding seasickness, sunburn and the like? And here, a schedule of activities. A drink with the captain, a shuffleboard competition on the forecastle, and that's about it. A real barrel of fun. Come in. Hello, Dr. Gebhardt. And there's the next one. Excuse me? You want something else from me, don't you? I'm afraid I do. What a first day at work. Well... What's the result of your examination of the victim? She's dead. I didn't make you work all night long, Dr. Gebhardt. <sighs> she was shot. Point-blank shot. Probably with a pistol. It seems like she was lying in bed. The shot struck her heart. She died immediately. One shot? More were unnecessary. And we only heard one shot, no? And there's just one entrance wound. Just one. I am told that I was drugged. That's how it seems. What can you tell me about it? Me? Why should that be my business? Haven't you analyzed the glass? No, I haven't. The inspector said he's the better chemist. I let him do it. That way I could at least concentrate on the body. Do you think the Baroness might have been drugged? She was very tired and unsteady when Legrand and I saw her. Yeah, I heard about that. I must have just missed her in the saloon. And without having seen her myself, it is hard to make a diagnosis. Of course. Can you say something about her general health? She was quite overweight, and the butler said that she suffered from diabetes. Despite that, she hadn't visited a doctor for several years. Doesn't sound good. Happens more frequently than you might suppose. Some people are scared of doctors and pay with an early death. It is possible that the Baroness wouldn't have lived much longer anyway. Do you know whose glass I drank from? What do you mean? Captain de Conti handed me a glass of champagne. But where did he get it? I... don't know. Did you ask him? I'm just asking because you were also in the saloon when the champagne was served. Yes, but I only entered the saloon a few seconds before you did. I didn't manage to get a drink myself. Which, in retrospect, is lucky. Ah. You're right about that. Have you already removed the bullet? Did Legrand send you? What is that Frenchman's problem? I already told you. I will get in touch as soon as I have it. That is also what I told the constable, who he kept sending all night long, once I finally got rid of Legrand himself. Did he look over your shoulder? He probably wanted to take the scalpel from my hand and hack away himself. But this is my surgery. 
and I will not let amateurs interfere with my work. That's understandable. How much longer will it take? Oh, I have just finished. Send my regards to His Majesty. Thanks. I think that's it for now. No. That is it for now, then, and later. I'm going to lie down for a few hours. Can you tell that to your boss? But... Could I at least have the key? Absolutely not. But if we have to examine the victim again... Then the esteemed inspector knows where to find me. In my cabin. In bed. Good night, Constable Zellner. An alarm like this one was set off yesterday. Mm. This one hasn't been set off. The security seal is intact. That is Legrand's cabin. That's the bullet from the Baroness's corpse. I don't know much about guns. Legrand will be able to tell me more about it. Come in. Ah, Zellner, are you ready? Good morning, Inspector Legrand. Uh, my head is pounding, but I think I'm okay. Chloral hydrate. Hmm? That's why you have a headache. I found traces of it in your champagne glass. What have you found out so far? The Baroness was shot in the chest at close range. We heard the shot. The murderer quickly fled the cabin and dropped the murder weapon over the railing later. A simple story so far. But... Why was her cabin door locked? Exactly. If the murderer wanted to make it seem like a suicide, he'd have shot her in the head and left the gun at the crime scene. And if it was murder, why did he go to all the trouble of locking the door from inside? And how did he manage that anyway? Especially since we arrived just a few seconds later and didn't see anyone near the cabin. Something doesn't make sense here. No. It doesn't, and it's driving me crazy. Did you find the murder weapon? On the gangway on the side of the ship. I suspect the murderer tried to drop it into the sea. He would have stood close to the railing to let it fall unseen. And since he doesn't know the ship, he had bad luck and dropped it right onto the gangway. Indeed. And do you find that probable? Not a bit. Neither do I. What kind of a gun is it? A pistol. A Luger 08. Antique. Manufactured a million times during and after the First World War. Austrian model. The owner is David Kreutzer, the violinist. We found him tonight totally drunk on the bow of the ship. He confirmed that it's his gun, but he claims that it was stolen from him. Fingerprints? Nothing. But it's worth mentioning that the clip was missing two bullets. Hmm. And it's definitely the murder weapon. The ballistic tests are incomplete. Actually, I've been waiting far too long for the bullet recovered from the corpse. Pay the good doctor a visit, Zellner, and see that he does his job. About the bullet, here it is. Excellent. Give it to me. As I suspected, a 7.65 Parabellum Luger. Don't you want to examine it in more detail? When I have time. For now, though, we can assume that we have the murder weapon. There can't be too many antique Luger 08 pistols on board. May I take a look at the Baroness's cabin? We already searched it thoroughly. Sure. But what about now, by daylight? Yes, yes, fine, it can't hurt. Here, take this with you. Thanks. I'll let you know if I find anything important. 
lunch, but only then, please. I'm very busy. Of course. Do you believe the violinist? He'll be the first person I question. He claims he can't remember anything from the last few hours. Says he drank a bottle of schnapps. He was on the train, and he doesn't have an alibi. His drunkenness could be a smokescreen. He fits the profile. He travels a lot, has access to high society. Could be interesting. And this chloral hydrate? Is a tranquilizer. Can be dissolved in alcohol. The effect begins in minutes and lasts for hours. Who gave you the glass of champagne? I believe it was Captain De Conti. If believing were enough for us, we'd have become priests, Constable. Be a policeman and find out for sure. Understood. You think that the jewel thief is the murderer? Our friend would have needed another key to open the safe and steal the second eye. The one the Baroness was carrying. At least, that's what we implied. What do you mean? The Baroness was famous for her forgetfulness. I convinced her to give me the third key. It seems safer for the eye. The thief searches the Baroness's cabin looking for the third key. She returns from the saloon earlier than expected, surprises him, and he can't allow her to identify him. He imprisons her until the coast is clear, and then shoots her. And thus, the thief becomes a murderer. But still doesn't have all the keys. Are you sure that there's no bomb inside this time? Professor Lucien locked it in front of an audience, and it will be opened for the first time in Cairo. Let's hope so. It would take hours to crack it, and you'd need heavy machinery. Or the keys. Or the three keys, that's right. Do you think, do you really think that the Raven is behind all this? He wrote the letter that was on the safe in the train. Without the letter, we wouldn't have opened the safe and the bomb wouldn't have exploded. But it doesn't seem like him, does it? The Raven was famous in part because he never hurt anyone, much less killed anyone, during a burglary. It's his handwriting, and he called me Nico. No one else does that. I chased that man across Europe for years. It is him. It has to be him. But the evidence... Enough. I'll be on my way. I want to find out who gave me the drug champagne. Good idea. Inspector Legrand, are you okay? Maybe you should take a break. I can sleep once I've caught the raven. Goodbye, Constable. Be seeing you. Legrand is risking not just his career, but his health as well on his hunt for the Raven. He's working like a demon. Maybe that's why he caught the Raven and no one else. This is the first murder scene I've ever set foot in. The door frame was damaged when Dr. Gebhardt kicked it in. The real question is, why was the door locked in the first place? Another alarm. It was tripped at some point. The seal is broken. 
but there's no way of telling whether it happened yesterday or five years ago. The most unportable portmanteau I've ever seen. A portable bar is more like it. Must be hard work transporting this big, heavy thing halfway around the globe. And the Baroness was lucky that the other freight cars were only lightly damaged by the explosion. Hmm. There should be a ventilation shaft behind the hatch. Usually a good way to break in and out undetected. But we run a ship. The ventilation shafts are very small here. I can't say why, and it seems impossible, but something tells me that the murderer entered and left the cabin through the door. The only question is how. An impressive piece, but I don't think it'll get me anywhere with the murder investigations. Hmm. The notepad has the ship's emblem on it. I suppose all the first-class cabins have them. It says, Inspector, be in the saloon at 10 p.m. There is a murderer on board and I will expose him. B. <whistles> the Baroness seems to have known the murderer. And that means that the Raven can't be the murderer. He never killed anybody. Legrand probably never got the message, otherwise he'd have said something. The mannequin surely came with the cabin. A mannequin for the Baroness's clothes would have a more generous figure. Sunflowers. By Van Gogh, I presume. He liked to paint that sort of thing. Can't be an original. They cost thousands of francs. A big, ugly and impractical vase. If it had a wider opening, one could at least use it as an umbrella stand. Hmm. Can't see anything. Wow. Heavier than it looks. Aha! Hmm. Nothing special. Although, it seems like one of the feathers was scorched at the top. Literally burnt. I'd better take it with me. Something's under there. More feathers. And they're singed as well. I'll put them with the others. There's still blood on the mattress. The sheet and the blanket have already been removed. To analyze them, I suppose. Hmm, nothing. Hmm, a tape recorder. Must go with the built-in speakers. Probably part of the cabin's furnishings. The tape recorder is older than the hills, but it was once very expensive. Top of the range. And it doesn't come cheap. Hmm. Strange. There's only one reel. And it's the wrong one. 
no. No sign of the original reel. A reel made by Zeibling. I know the brand. Zeibling's tapes can be overwritten many times without losing quality. They're used in offices so that executives can record messages for the secretaries on the same tape over and over again. But they're not good for much else. They're robust, but they don't offer much in terms of sound quality. The blood spot is the only sign that someone committed a crime in here. Hmm. Somehow... That's odd. The blood is so... red. Shouldn't it gradually darken in the air? Turn brown? The unusual color of the blood could be something that Legrand and Dr. Gebhardt missed last night. All cats are gray in the dark, as the saying goes. I should take a sample. The unusual color of the blood could be all cat. Apparently, the Baroness didn't have time to unpack her bags. Or rather, didn't have time to tell her butler to unpack them for her. Sifting through all that would take ages. But here, the Baroness's handbag. Ha ha! A small leather bound book. 1964 is engraved on it. This must be the Baroness's diary. Let's see. Yes, it's a diary, all right. Difficult to read. No entry from yesterday. A brief, sober description of what she's done recently. Met Morris. Arranged benefit concert for renovation of Louvre Southeastern Wing. Times photo shoot for Eye of Sphinx. B.M. Poor excuse for photographer. Too fidgety. And so on. Hmm. This entry looks strange. The handwriting is shaky. Difficult to read. Dreamt of Bobby. Yesterday would have been his birthday. Next week, Jay's. Hmm. The portholes face the side deck. If someone climbed out of the cabin through a porthole, Legrand and I would have seen them. Hmm. It's the same problem as with the door. If someone left the cabin through the porthole, how did they lock it? And the Baroness wasn't shot from outside. The doctor said she was shot at close range. The Baroness was a very busy woman, and it looks like she had to cope with the loss. She writes about Bubby and Jay. Neither seem to be alive anymore. Almost every family lost loved ones in the war. Maybe hers as well. I'll leave it there. I don't have time to read all of it. Cosmetics, a handkerchief, a spectacles case, nothing special. Assuming the murderer isn't a magician, and the Baroness locked the door herself before she went to bed, the murderer couldn't have left the cabin through the door. So, the murderer must have still been in here when Dr. Gebhardt kicked the door in. Which is unlikely, because someone would have seen him, or he found another way out of the cabin.
The Baroness's butler looks like he didn't get much sleep. I would describe his facial expression as worried. Hello, Mr. Inch. Oh, Constable, hello. You look the worse for wear. It must be terrible for you. Quite terrible. No one will hire me now. Uh, excuse me? My mistress was murdered. Would you hire a butler who's been mixed up in a murder? But if it turns out that you're not guilty... If? But what? If not, who else would they blame? There are no gardeners on this ship. <laughs> I understand your problem. Under these circumstances, I'm sure you'd answer some questions that could help clear your name, wouldn't you? Of course. Did you notice anything suspicious last night? No, sir. After the Baroness went to the saloon, I went to the forecastle. I was there until the alarm went off. I went to the side deck and arrived shortly after Professor Lucian and Miss Miller. We found you and Inspector Legrand there. You were unconscious, and the inspector asked us to take care of you. Did you hear the gunshot? No, just the alarm, sir. You said you were on the forecastle. It sounded like the Baroness let you have the rest of the night off. Not entirely, sir. One of the crew informed me that the Baroness wanted to be roused at quarter to ten. Right. Why was that? I suppose that she wanted to toast the success of the journey with the captain and the other passengers. She hadn't intended to take a nap, then? That was not her way, sir. She had a lot of... Spirit, shall we say, when it came to social engagements and a glass or two of champagne. The Baroness's cabin seems to have been ransacked. Indeed, sir, by the Baroness herself. Really? She was searching for something the entire afternoon. And did she find it? I think she did, sir, yes. She was in high spirits when she finally left her cabin. You wouldn't happen to know what she was looking for, would you? I'm afraid not. Would you describe the Baroness as orderly? Uh, well, she... she always had a lot of responsibilities, sir. That doesn't answer my question. She used to take a lot of luggage on journeys, and I helped her keep track of it as best I could. She was always very angry when she couldn't find something. What about the photos and the documents I saw in her cabin? I really don't know. They were out of bounds to me, sir. Memories from the war, I'd say. They meant a lot to her.
The Baroness seemed to be pretty drunk the last time I saw her. Is that so? Does that surprise you? Did the Baroness not drink? Oh yes, she drank. It was no secret. I understand. How serious was her habit? Serious enough, sir. Was she under any medical supervision? Certainly not, sir. She adamantly refused to see a doctor. Like so many elderly women, she had a distinct aversion to hospitals and the like. How long had you worked for the Baroness? Six months, sir. Only six months? I always thought that butlers stayed with their employers for decades. Those decades have to start at some point, Constable. Her former butler wasn't able to fulfill his duties any longer. Gout, sir. I understand. I took on his duties and hoped for a secure position for the next twenty years. May I ask what happened to your arm? A souvenir from the war, sir. Doesn't it hinder your work? Yes, sir. Obviously. I didn't mean to offend you. The Baroness had a soft spot for disabled veterans. I think she'd been through a lot herself. I think that's all for now. Please, sir. Find the murderer. You have to clear me of all suspicion. We're lucky that the Lydia has a well-stocked medical center at its disposal. I suppose it was added during the war. A ship of this size wouldn't normally have a full medical center. Neither Dr. Gebhardt nor Constable Oliver can keep up with Legrand's pace, but in contrast to good old Robert, the doctor doesn't let himself get roped in for the long haul. I wonder what would happen if Legrand dragged him out of bed for another investigation. I'm not paying for this trip, and that's a fair price for my cabin. It's rather... Plain, shall we say. Come in. Constable? About the tranquilizer. Do you know how you wound up with the glass? Not yet. Then you should stop wasting my time and get back to work. I found feathers in the Baroness's cabin. Really? Yes, they were in a vase next to the door. I hope this is leading up to some information that justifies this interruption. Some of the feathers are singed. Hmm, show me. Well, you may have something here. I think that someone fired a shot through a pillow or something like that, and the muzzle flash scorched the down. Yes, possible. Try to find the pillow and we'll take it from there. I took a closer look at the blood spot from the Baroness's bed. Yes, what's wrong with it? It looks... odd. Odd? I think it should be darker. I understand. 
The iron in blood causes it to darken the longer it's exposed to the air. Right. And... We don't have time to waste. Dr. Gebhardt, examine the body thoroughly. He would have noticed if anything was wrong. And you trust Dr. Gebhardt completely? I trust everyone as much as is advisable. There will be a complete autopsy in Cairo. Until then, the doctor is one of the few people on board who is not a suspect. You, him, the stowaway, Constable Oliver, and I all have alibis. There are still enough suspects left. I was able to make the traces of a note on the Baroness's notepad legible. She wrote that a murderer is on board and that she'll unmask him. She asks the recipient to meet her in the saloon at 10 p.m. If we can find the recipient... I was the recipient. Monsieur? When I entered my cabin last night, I found a message on the floor. Someone must have slipped it under the door. Why didn't you say anything about it? I didn't know that I was obliged to. We are partners. Not really. You're helping me out until we reach Cairo, because you somehow managed to remain on board. But... I'll choose when and with whom I share information. You can accept that and continue assisting me, or you can spend the rest of the journey on a deck chair thinking about missed opportunities. And none of this is by any chance related to the fact that the message doesn't suit your raven theory. The Baroness knew the murderer from the past, and he was already a murderer when he boarded the ship. The Raven was always just a thief, not a murderer. Careful, Constable. Are you accusing me of perverting the facts? Of course not, Monsieur. Then let's get back to work. Good day, Constable. About the tranquilizer. Do you know how you wound up with the glass? Not yet. Then you should stop. I'll be in touch if I uncover more clues. Very well. The alcoholic drinks and everything that goes with them is top-notch on this ship. Fresh ice and tongs. Hmm. They could be useful. What is the meaning of this? Are even the police light-fingered nowadays? I need this tool for a criminal investigation. Well... Why didn't you say so? So, how are you getting along? Can I be of any help? Actually, you could answer a few questions. Did everyone drink from the same bottle of champagne last night? There was more than one bottle, if that's what you mean. There were quite a few guests, and the event lasted several hours. The last bottle of champagne, the one the Baroness drank from, did anyone else drink from it? Certainly. We have reason to believe that the champagne was drugged. Incredible. But wouldn't that have made everyone drowsy? Not if it was only the Baroness's glass that was drugged. I see. That's possible. On a night like that, many glasses are filled and emptied. There are several stewards, many guests. No one keeps track of every glass and every bottle. A few drops in a glass? Yes, it's certainly possible. The glass you handed me last night, where did you get it? Ah, I understand. You think your glass was poisoned as well? Did you pour it yourself? No. I saw that you weren't doing so well and wanted to rescue the situation. I took the first available glass and I give it to you. Was it on the table? No, I hurry over to you, together with Dr. Gebhardt, who... Of course. He had the glass in his hand. He was looking around for a place to set it down, so that he could examine you. I took it from him. And gave it to me. I'd like to apologize for that, but 
You look so worse for the wear, and I just wanted to comfort you. I didn't think of looking for a new glass for you. Hmm. So the doctor had the drugged glass in his hand. What was your experience of last night? Oh, terrible. Dinner was fantastic. Everyone was excited about having a pleasant drink under the stars. And then this. You were in the saloon all night long. As the captain, I have to care for my passengers. After you and the others rushed out, I tried to maintain a festive atmosphere. <laughs> but when the alarm it goes off, I lose the battle. <laughs> How was the Baroness? She really surprised me. After she was so unapproachable at the reception and didn't show her face for the entire afternoon, I was afraid she was one of the bores and bourgeoisie. But then she arrived in the early evening in the best of moods. Already had a few, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Did she say anything to you? She asked me where Legrand's cabin was. I told her, then invited her to come for drinks in the evening. I said it would be great fun. The whole ship will be there, and you don't want to miss that, I told her. And then? She seemed to like the idea. She smiled, and then left again for a few minutes. Then she came back and seemed very happy. We drank a toast to life. But at some point she didn't feel well anymore? She overdid it a bit. She suddenly started to swoon and almost spilled her drink. I asked her if she wanted to rest for a moment in her cabin. At first, she didn't want to. She definitely wanted to stay in the saloon. But then she realized that she really did need to lie down. We left together. You know the rest of the story. Is it possible to find out where the alarm was set off? I'm afraid not. There are alarms all over the ship. I saw that they're sealed. Can't we just check whether the seal is broken? I'm afraid they're gonna be missing on a lot of alarms. You know, this is an old ship and over the years... So, you're saying that the alarms haven't been regularly maintained? I'll inform the crew immediately, of course. Of course. What can you tell me about the passengers? Oh... Not that much, I'm afraid. I wanted to get to know them properly at the reception. In most cases, I just shook hands with them as they boarded the ship. There are a few regulars on board, and after dinner, I had a conversation with Mr. Kreutzer, a talented violinist, and Lady Westmacott. But you already know them from the train. It seems like there aren't that many passengers on board. These bloody airplanes are making our lives miserable. Can you imagine? Grown men prefer to jam themselves into a narrow metal coffins instead of enjoying the fresh sea air on a ship. It's all about saving time. It shouldn't be about how much time it takes to get from A to B, but about how you spend that time. What you experience on the journey, that's what it's about. I'll get back to my investigations now. Ciao, Constable. Lady Westmacott seems to be an early bird, but maybe that's just because of all the excitement. I saw a twinkle in her eye on the train. She's eager to be part of a real detective story. Lady Westmacott, already on your f oh.
Constable, don't you think before you speak? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No time for chit-chat. What have you found out? We're still working on the case. Actually, I have a couple of questions for you. Please, go ahead. What did you think of our adventure on the train? An extraordinary story, isn't it? I'm glad that you were able to prove yourself, Mr. Zellner. Hopefully not for the last time. I'm glad that everything ended well. I want to thank you sincerely for taking care of Matthew. I can't bear to think about something happening to him. It all worked out in the end. Do you think that the thief from the train and the murderer are the same person? I think the new Raven is capable of anything. Legrand believes there is no new Raven. He thinks that the old one has returned. He said that. Do you think it's possible? Everyone thinks he's dead. As a dramatist, the return of the Raven would certainly be delightful. A legend comes back from the grave for one last job. It's quite romantic. At the same time, though, I'd be disappointed. Why is that? I followed the Raven's career closely. There weren't many burglars with such character and charm. His burglaries were clever and entertaining, but he was sloppy in London. He almost got caught, and I'll never forgive him for the affair on the train. No, I would much rather that the Raven stayed dead and had nothing to do with the burglary or the murder. What do you think? Who is our suspect? Everyone, or almost everyone. Everyone on board is physically capable of shooting someone. But who has the dark desire to take the life of a defenseless person? One cannot read minds. And one should not try. You have to collect evidence, traces, clues. That's what will lead us to the killer. It won't be like a bad crime novel, in which they introduce a new character shortly before the end who, surprise, surprise, is also the murderer. Murderers leave evidence. They're nervous or unnaturally relaxed. They have to adjust constantly. And because of that, they make mistakes. This is your chance, Constable. If you find the mistake, you'll find your murderer. Have you noticed anything related to the murder? Unfortunately not. I was already in my cabin and missed all the commotion. Damnable old age. You're telling me. Oh, you're still young. At my age, you have to expect that you won't experience much anymore. And although I've written about murder so many times, I've never actually witnessed one. How exciting. I doubt everyone is so relaxed in such a situation. Heartless is the word you're searching for, right, Constable? I certainly didn't want the Baroness to be murdered. But if I can't undo it, then I might as well enjoy it. What do you think of Inspector Legrand? He seems to be as skilled as everyone says. Intelligent, focused. I had a chat with him yesterday and he impressed me, but there's something haunted in his eyes. I don't think he ever really stopped hunting the raven. Catching the raven made him famous. What if he actually shot the wrong person? Unjustified fame bothers people, the good ones at least. And you think he's one of the good ones? Anyone who tries so hard to tear down his own memorial must be honorable. <laughs> or insane. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zellner. Of course.
I better let the men do their work. If one of them had detected something yesterday, he'd already have informed the Grand or the Captain. I don't care what Legrand and Dr. Gebhardt say. The blood spot looks strange, and I'd like to take a sample. Maybe I'll get the chance to analyze it. I don't care what Legrand... Maybe I'll... No, I've slept enough. Come in. Constable? About the tranquilizer. Who gave you the glass of champagne? It was Captain De Conti. You're sure? He doesn't deny it, but he also says that the glasses passed through many hands that night and that everyone had access to the champagne. So it could have been anyone. Maybe the question isn't who put the poison in the glass, but rather who it was they wanted to poison. Smart. And who were they trying to poison? Dr. Gebhardt? The captain got the glass from him. Hmm. An unconscious ship's doctor. That sounds like it would be more used to a murderer than a drugged constable. You think so? Did the murderer have reason to assume that his shot might not kill the victim immediately and, and that Dr. Gebhardt would be able to save her? You're right. That's improbable. <laughs> My ego is just searching for reasons for them to want to kill her and not me. Good job, Zona. I'll be in touch if I uncover more clues. Very well. 